you like really aware of the problem and not just here in the United States but everywhere by showing like the food, the food security it like gives a more like definite this is how it is in this country so you can like better understand their situation and possibly like what you can do to help. The website's very interactive and it made it interesting to learn. Congressman John Molinar from Michigan's 4th District, thank you for joining us. Sure. Nice to be here with you. Well, first of all, can you tell us about your district and the kinds of agriculture within it? Sure. Well, we, Michigan's 4th Congressional District is a strong agricultural district. We have over 10,000 farms, uh, over 15,000 15, uh, actually farm operators according to the census. And, and we're very strong in dairy, uh, beans. Um, many different uh, products. We even grow mint in uh, St. John's area. I have a mint festival. Uh, but it's a strong uh, agricultural uh, district and uh, one of the leaders in our state and in the country. Now you have previous uh, experience in public service serving in both the Michigan State House and Senate. So how does that experience at the Michigan and, the, and at the state level compare to public service here in Washington? Well, you know, one of the first bills that I did in the Michigan legislature was a groundwater conflict resolution uh, that helped uh, farmers who were irrigating potato crops and their nearby residents who uh, were losing water in their wells and there was a big conflict there. Uh, what we did is we looked at Indiana and their groundwater conflict resolution uh, mechanism and, and we adopted that in Michigan, a very similar approach uh, with, within the Michigan Right to Farm uh, legislation as well. And um, we found that it was problem solving, it helped agriculture, it was a, you know building bridges in the community. Um, those are areas I'm looking at uh, when it comes to the federal government as well. We've, right now we have a lot of overreach from the EPA and federal agencies that is causing problems for our farmers and we want to make sure that government stays within its appropriate role and, and uh, promotes a strong agricultural uh, economy. Now your experience in the private sector is focused primarily on science and the business end of things and how do you think that experience will help you when it comes to your service on the House Ag Committee? Well one of the things I, I grew up in a town uh, Midland Michigan which is the home of Dow Chemical my father was a PhD chemist who grew up on a farm in Indiana and, and uh, I grew up was a, a chemistry major and worked uh, for Dow both as a chemist and then in the marketing area and one of the things from my earliest days as a kid, I can remember is the importance of sound science being the foundation for public policy and decisions that were being made. And so I'm hoping to bring that perspective to Washington. Uh, I serve on the Ag Committee, as you mentioned, and, and there's a lot in the area of biotech that will involve science. Uh, we're looking at the nutrition subcommittee as well. We want to have good public policy. Uh, but the sound science-based uh, decision making is really important. So where do you find sound science? Because it seems like a lot of debates these days, and just using climate change for an example, one side will say that their science says something and then another study will come out that contradicts it. So how can you find, how is it possible, or how are you going to work to find science that both sides of the aisle can agree upon to really uh, base decision making? Well, I think it involves listening and uh, discerning uh, you know, who has a, an agenda versus who is truly following the science where it leads. Um, you know, I can remember uh, as a young man uh, when the Alar uh, scare and you had Meryl Streep testifying uh, about the dangers of Alar and, you know, the science really didn't uh, back that up and it caused huge problems for an entire industry. Um, I've seen that happen over and over again where if someone has a political agenda and they want to, um, you know, pursue that agenda at the expense of good decision making, that you need people who can weigh both sides of the issue, really look at the information uh, and the facts. And so, you know, I'm someone who likes to have a comprehensive uh, overview of an issue, understand uh, both sides of the issue, and then come to a conclusion. So, I think I'm someone who's a listener. Uh, I want to listen to farmers. Uh, you know, they're the first conservationists. Uh, they have a great stake at making sure we have good. Uh, policies for our natural resources and, and, um, and make sure that I'm an advocate for them. 
Now, your predecessor in this seat, Dave Camp, worked uh, long and hard for tax reform, but the, those plans eventually didn't come to fruition in the previous mm -hmm. Congress. How do you think those plans and tax reform concept as a whole will work out for, for private business, for the public sector, and for agriculture in a GOP Congress? I think Dave Camp's work is going to be the foundation for this Congress as well. I know uh, Chairman Paul Ryan has the highest regard for Dave for the work that the Ways and Means Committee uh, did in the last session. Um, you know, I believe that that is an area where there could be a bipartisan uh, proposal solution. Uh, the president has said he wants tax reform. Uh, in this case, you know, as with many things, you know, actually putting something on paper where you get people to agree is a challenge. Um, but it sure is important to our economy and to have a pro-growth strategy that, uh, you know, hopefully uh, revenue neutral tax reform that lowers taxes, uh, spreads it out so that it's not picking winners and losers, but a tax code that is simpler, fairer, and uh, promotes growth. Those would be the priorities. Um, I think Paul Ryan has as much uh, ability of anyone serving in Congress to get the job done, and, and I hope to be part of that in this Congress. And just to wrap it up here, Congressman, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what it was that made you want to run for, uh, run for office in Washington? Sure. Well, I grew up in a family that wasn't very political, um, but I had a chance to get to know Bill Schuette when he first ran for Congress and, uh, and Dave Camp as well and, and there was a strong ethic of public service and, and I've always been someone who likes to help people uh, try and do what I can to solve problems and, and so having served at the local level and city government as well as in the state level um, I believe I've developed a skill set that I think will help me contribute to the Congress. You know my background in the private sector I think is important as well because job growth and economic growth is, is going to be important for our country's future and, and especially in agriculture. In Michigan we've benefited from a strong agricultural economy at times when the auto industry was really struggling. Agriculture really uh, helped sustain our state and when you look at the opportunities for exports and new markets uh, I would love to be part of that in helping agriculture move forward. Congressman John Molinar from Michigan's 4th District, thank you for joining us. Thank you.